anybody else rocking these cute 90s hair clips? Because you cut your own bangs and fucked it up? Hi booktube, I am Rebecca without my Sarah, or anyone, except my husband who is upstairs playing Mario Kart and you are 100% going to hear the Mario Kart sounds and him just being very loud and laughing with his friends. This is the only time I felt comfortable doing a video is if he can't hear me. I know I don't know how people film when there's other people in the house. You're so fucking powerful and you're like, you're strong. You are a strong warrior. How do you do that? I don't feel comfortable doing it yet. Guys. Why? love so much. This is the first time I am sitting down and recording a video in like over a month. Literally sitting down. I'm sitting down, um, by the way, because I'm tired, okay? This timeline sucks. I haven't really been reading or doing much of anything creative. Mostly I've been spending my days bouncing between Animal Crossing and Skyrim, and then at night I play League of Legends, and that's been my life for months. I just instead want to talk about some series uh, that I have not finished and that I'm on the fence about finishing. Um, all of these are from 2017 or earlier. If I've read it after that, I went through all those books and I either know that I do or do not want to finish the series. I'm not on the fence. These are all ones that I'm like, should I continue? <laughs> I'm going to start with the most recent, I guess. Um, and then really go back. Uh, some of them I started a long time ago, but they've still been in my head. It's like, do I want to finish this series? Because I'm real picky and kind of stubborn. I'm also drinking out of a teacup because I miss Sarah. We chat a lot, but like I can't like see her. Well, I saw her today when we played D&D, but like virtually. <laughs> it's different. I miss us sitting on the couch, bitching, and watching Beat Bobby Flay. Those were really fun times. Okay, so the first series I want to talk about is the Everlost series by Neil Shusterman. I have only read this one, the first one. These were published like a while ago, but I read this first one in 2017 and never continued. And I'm really unsure if I want to. I liked this a lot. I think actually all of these, I liked them or I liked them at the time or I liked some of them and that's why I'm kind of debating. But I did really like this. I just, I didn't continue right away and now a lot of time has passed. I'd probably reread this, which I don't think would be a problem. It was a very quick read, as Neil Schusterman often is. Uh, I really enjoy Neil Schusterman, so I think that's part of the reason why I'm kind of stubbornly hanging on to this and being like, should I continue? So if you've read this series, please let me know, and that goes for all of them. Should I continue? Next up is the Truth Witch series, or Truth Lands, Witch Lands, Witch Lands? I think it's Witch Lands. By Susan Dennard, right? Yeah, Susan Dennard. I enjoyed Truth Witch very much. Um, Wind Witch I liked like most of it and then for some reason by the end I felt kind of like meh on it and I don't remember why now. I would absolutely need to reread these two books if I were to continue with the series but I'm very much debating and also I don't know if it's completed yet and I'm very like nervous if I'm going to like the end of this series because I there's nothing that really gets me angry like investing so much time in a series that gets just like so fucked by the end and it's just like the author completely trashes everything they've done and that's just that's just happened to me a few times okay and i i don't trust some of y'all now and um so i worry about that this next series i don't think i've ever heard anyone talk about so you might not be able to help me but it's the sarintha jack series by anne aguirre i feel like i've seen her name around recently she may have another book that, or series that was out that people might be more familiar with. I read Grim Space ages ago with Sarah, and by ages ago I mean in 2017. I liked it. It's kind of how I felt about it. Like, it was, it was fun. I didn't particularly like the love interest, but I feel like he maybe has potential. Um, I don't really talk about it much, but I'm a fan of the Kate Daniels books, and I didn't like the first one in that series at all, and then I was like, die hard a fan for the rest of them. So... It's, it's, you know, it's possible it would get me along those lines, but uh, I have the sequel, in fact. It's called Wanderlust. I don't know if I want to keep going with it. It's kind of a long series. They're all mass market paperbacks, but it was, like, a fairly quick read. I remember it being, like, a fun idea, 
the way they jump through space was, um, it felt unique to me at the time. I also don't read a lot of sci-fi, so. And I liked the protagonist well enough. Uh, just, um, her love interest was like, ew, and me, ew. I think it was probably like a hate to love, and we all know I'm very picky about the hate to love. And by picky, I mean, I don't really like it that much. So next are our books from 2016, and I have them all typed up, and I'm just gonna keep looking at it. I'm not gonna pretend I have this memorized. I had wine before this wine because that's the way life is going right now. Next is a very popular series on booktube and it's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Um, I liked Red Rising. It went a direction I wasn't expecting. By the end of it I felt like I didn't need to read more. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of where I was. Um, but I am kind of curious because it, it was um, surprising to me and I found it very readable. I was actually reading that one with Deb and Deb Dean effed it. I don't think she finished that uh, that book, but I did finish it and I finished it quicker than I would have expected for the kind of topic and the fantasy setting and normally something like that I think would take me a little bit longer to read. But I remember reading it pretty quickly and um, finding it intriguing. So I am curious to continue. Uh, but I would like a push, I guess. I'm not sure if I want to. Like, I'm fully not there. Next is, I think it's called Shattered Sea, but it starts with Half a King uh, by Joe Abercrombie. Abercrombie? That's his name. I read Half a King with my Italian friend and my Australian friend. We're like the three of us in um, a chat together, a group chat, and have been for years, bonding over a book that we all dated so much that we... <laughs> formed a passionate, lifelong friendship because of it. We all kind of, uh, I feel like we all enjoyed this, and I did enjoy it. And part of the reason I hesitated on continuing is because it followed different characters, and that made me hesitate. But now that I've had some time to think about it, I actually feel like I'd prefer to follow different characters. <laughs> because... That's my husband. Isn't he cute? I mean, you can't see him. Hopefully he'll be in a video soon. I feel like maybe that will help ease me into like recording videos while he's in the house. Is doing one like while he's right next to me. From what I remember of Half a King, which isn't a lot, I... Do you fucking mind, dude? I, I feel like the protagonist, I liked him, but I feel like I don't need to continue with him. He definitely had like a conclusion to his story. So anyway, should I continue with the Half a King series? Because I just don't know. Uh, the next one is another one that I don't see talked about very much, and I really loved the first one, and it was um, Mistress of the Art of Death. This book is about a woman who back in, she, okay, okay, <laughs> how do I describe this book? I haven't read it since 2016, apparently, because that's the part of the list it's on. Was it really 2016? Wow. I also read this one with my Italian friend and my Australian friend. Um, we used to read books together more. Y'all, we should do that more. I know we have very different tastes, but if we can find random shit like this, that's fun. Let's do that more. I don't know if they even watch my videos, so I don't know why I'm talking to them. Anyway, Mistress of the Art of Death, I think took place in like the 1800s, I wanna say, and the protagonist did like forensic work, like very early forensic work, but she kind of had to like hide it a little bit because she was a woman and people didn't really take her seriously. This is like, I am, I, I am doing this purely from memory. Um, and I'm describing the plot because I feel like I don't see this talked about very much, so, um, if you, if that sounds interesting to you, there's, like, she gets to a town and there's, like, a serial killer and she has to start investigating the bodies, like, in a time where they didn't have a lot of resources to try to piece together this, um, these murders. And I really enjoyed it. I did know who the killer was, like, very early, but that wasn't, like, the fault of the book. Also, that doesn't ruin it for me. I don't know if I've talked about that much. I don't really give a fuck. That, like, that, I, it's fine. I prefer to be surprised, but... Um, sometimes, like, especially if you write, sometimes who the killer is going to be is a little obvious, especially if you write because you're like, okay, like, as a writer, I know this, this, and this, and anyway. I really enjoyed this. It felt, it felt like a standalone, and I think that's why I've hesitated continuing with it. She also, like, I, I, she had a love interest, and I think, like, something was going on by the end, and I'm, like, a little reluctant to see how he like plays into her career I guess for the time and I'm just not sure if I want to keep going but if you have continued with that series I would freaking love your opinion on it because I haven't heard anyone talk about it and I, I'd like to know if I should keep going. The next series is Howl's Movie Castle. 
by Diana Wynne Jones. I think, and I don't make lists of my favorite books very often, but I would probably put Howl's Moving Castle on a list of favorite books of all time. And I know there's more. <laughs> And I just don't know if I want to keep going. And it's for a lot of the reasons that I already talked about. And I don't know what it's going to do to the world or how I feel about... I, it won't change how I feel about Howl's Moving Castle. It can't because it's just... That's been a love of mine for so many years. Um, I saw the movie before the book even. I think I like the book more now. But they're both great. Anyway, if you continue with Howl's Moving Castle, please tell me like... How does it go? Like, is it good? I, just, I don't know what to do. Alright, the next three are from 2015. The first one is Rotten Ruin by Jonathan Mayberry? Mayberry? I'm not really sure. I read the first two in this series. Two or three, I'm not 100% sure. Again, um, anything at this point, I would have to reread. This is a zombie uh, series. Really enjoyed it. I think I started getting a little nervous that there was going to be like a love triangle situation happening. So if you read this, please let me know if that is what happens. Because like, I feel like that would take away a lot from me. <laughs> For a lot of reasons. Not even just being like that. I don't particularly like love triangles. I kind of liked the friendship that had developed between a uh, male and female character. And I, I didn't want it to turn into uh, like a romantic thing. So... Uh, anyway, that's probably why I hesitated to continue. The next series I know was popular when it came out, and it's Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. Uh, I only read the first one. It was very typical YA dystopian tropes, and I didn't give a fuck. Like, I really enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was so much fun. But I think I was just swept up in other series that year. I was reading a lot, um... In that time, 2015, I think was a pretty, yeah, that was like a really big reading year for me. I just, I, I was probably caught up in other series and wasn't really sure. I just didn't pick up more. So I would love to hear your opinion if you, if you continue with that series, like, should I read it again? I would read the, read the first one again. I don't give a crap. Like, it was a lot of fun. I would definitely read it again. Uh, the next one is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. And uh, this is very heavy science fiction. I did genuinely love Ancillary Justice, but it was, it took me a while to get through. I think I only read it because of a science fiction fantasy book club I was a part of back uh, when I lived in LA, which I miss so much. Like, oh my god, I miss y'all. None of them watching my videos, but like, god damn, I miss that book club. That was a really fun book club. Really heavy sci-fi, uh, so I just, I, I hadn't continued, and... I would definitely have to go back and reread and I think I think I'd get through it a little bit quicker now because I've read a bit more sci-fi since then and I've read it since then so I feel like it would having that knowledge of what kind of what's gonna happen beforehand because I don't fully remember what happens but having the knowledge beforehand of what happens would probably help me understand it a little bit more but I just um, I'm not sure I think it's a trilogy but uh, I don't even know how many books are in it. Okay, so I have two from 2014. And wow, I, okay, the first one is The Water Fire Saga by Jennifer Donnelly. And this starts with um, Deep Blue, I think it was called. Okay, I read the first two books in this series because of a website I was working on at the time. Uh, I used to work for this website. I'm not even going to give it out. I used to write blog posts for them. And I would review young adult novels. And, um, my, I mean, like, review because, like, I wasn't allowed to write negative things. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they were partnered with Disney. And Disney gave them Deep Blue. And I think Rogue Wave was the second one. I'm not 100% sure. And Deep Blue, I felt like I didn't really like it that much. I was like, it, it was fine. I didn't think it was bad by any means. I felt a little old for it, which... I mean, it's for young adults. It, that's totally valid. I, I just felt old for it, which is fine. But I had to read the sequel because I had to write a blog post about both of the books. And I loved the sequel. Um, back in 2014. I don't know how I feel about it now. I read the third one. I'm pretty sure just on my own because I liked it. I think. Yes. And then I believe there was a fourth one. And I think that's the end. And I just didn't, never picked it up. And now, it's very complicated. This is a book about mermaids. I know it's like a very much a, a throne kind of, like there's a, I almost said mutiny. Like, they're not pirates, Rebecca, you dumb bitch. Anyway, a princess mermaid, like, gets thrown from her home, 
as her family's killed and the throne is taken and she has to like work to get the position back. Uh, uh, I don't that's as much as I could tell you about what the series was about. And it followed multiple mermaids, obviously, not just her. And there's not a lot of mermaid books out there. Y'all, we need more mermaid books. The next one is a thriller, which I think it's the only thriller on here. Uh, the first book is called Heartsick. It's by Chelsea Kane. Um, I picked this up so compulsively. I probably just saw it at the library and was like, okay, Heartsick. <laughs> It's about a detective who gets called back to the job to find this serial killer after he'd been on leave because he had been hunting a different serial killer, a woman who had kidnapped him and like kept him and tortured him for a while. And it was very weird. <laughs> I remember liking it very much, but feeling so reluctant to continue because there were a lot of books. I don't know how many books are in this series. Absolutely love to hear more about this series if you've read it because I did like the first one at the time six years ago. The last five are from pre-2014. I don't have exact years on them because it was before I was using Goodreads but these are series that I started before 2014. We could try to go in order. Oh that could be fun. Okay. I think going in order, the first one would be the Cirque du Freak series by Darren Chan. Um, Chan? Chan, right? Okay. I read three of them, I think. Okay, here's my experience with the Cirque du Freak books. I first saw the movie. I know, the movie, The Vampire's Assistant, and I loved it. <laughs> this was a long time ago. Is this movie good? I don't remember because I haven't seen it since, but I really, really loved it when I saw it. I thought it was great. And I was like, well, let's read the books. And I read the first one and I was like, this is like the first 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> like, it's barely any of the movie. So I felt like kind of cheated. So I read the next two, I want to say, and really liked them. Like, I was like, oh, okay, we're getting into like the exciting shit now. But I didn't continue from there. And I know there's a lot of them, but I know they're very quick reads. So if you're a fan of those vampire books, please let me know because it mixes several things that I like together. Mostly vampires. <sighs> All right, a few of these, I really have to go back. The next few were definitely much earlier because they were before I moved to California. And I think the next one would be Infected by Scott Sigler. I know there's at least two, I think there's three. I used to have the second one. It was called Contagion. This is not a great series to read right now, obviously, but, you know, should I read it one day? I don't know if I would like Infected now. Looking back on it, um, I'm very, I'm not sure. I did like it um, very much at the time. I think it started as a podcast, I want to say. Yeah, like back in the day. When was this published? Because I probably read it shortly after it was published. <sighs> 2008. Yeah, okay. So maybe this wasn't as late as I thought it was. Although the other three are pretty... I read them a long time ago. So I think I read it right when the sequel or so was coming out. So I'm not sure what year that would have been. I distinctly remember picking this up because it was at a time when I wasn't reading very much. And I happened to go to Barnes & Noble and I wanted horror and so I found this. And I started the sequel and kind of like accidentally DNF'd it. Like I just put it down one day. Again, I wasn't reading very much at the time, so it didn't happen. If you continue with this, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Um, I don't even know if I want to reread this. I'd give it a shot. The next three, um, I'm a little torn on. I know the next one would be The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. <laughs> now, I know I called this, or I'm gonna call this video, should I finish this series? I'm not gonna finish The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. There's too many. And I know at some point, if you look at the Goodread ratings, they get really high and then they just plummet. And then they, they really, they just get down there. They get real low. And then just crash, just crashes and burns. Should I not shit talk Anne Rice? I don't know. I love my experience with The Vampire Chronicles. Do you wanna know how it started? Y'all, do you wanna know how it started? because it didn't start with an interview with a vampire. My relationship with the Vampire Chronicles started because a friend of mine rented a movie about vampires called The Queen of the Damned. She was like, do you wanna watch this? And I said, 
if there's vampires, fuck yeah, I want to watch it. And it stars Stuart Townsend <laughs> as Lestat, and we were in love with him. <laughs> like, <laughs> imagine, like, I don't know, 13-year-old Rebecca, at most, Thurston after Stuart Townsend, because I thought he was so sexy in Queen of the Damned. Yeah, anyway, that was my beginning of the Vampire Chronicles. And then I was like, oh, it starts with Interview with a Vampire? This looks serious. Queen of the Damned, if you haven't seen it, God, I gotta rewatch that shit. It does not take itself seriously whatsoever. And you know what? I'm just gonna say it. Stuart Townsend is a better story than Tom Cruise. He's not, but, but he was my Lestat. Oh man, I'm committing so many sins right now. Anyway, uh, eventually I did read Interview with a Vampire, and then I read The Vampire Lestat, and I, I really liked that one. I think those were the only two I read, the first two. I, I'm pretty sure I started The Queen of the Damned, and I just had the movie in my head so much. Is that the third one? You can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Have you read more of The Vampire Chronicles, and should I continue with them? Because I am, like, desperate for more vampire content. There's not enough of it out there, and a lot of it out there, I'm gonna be honest, sucks shit. The next two... I think I know what order they're in. Uh, the next one <laughs> would be Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. I read, I think, the first three or four of these books. Or I read the first three, and I think I started the fourth? I don't remember. I was in high school when I read these. Um, I remember getting really into them and reading them very quickly. I'm kind of curious about, like, where this goes. <laughs> because there's like six? I don't know. And, and then there's like... I was just looking on Goodreads tonight. It like continues with like people's journals and I, I'm just, I'm so curious what happens. Because when it, I had gotten to it, it had jumped forward in time kind of a lot and that was very shocking to me. And maybe that's what put me off reading it because I think I didn't after the fourth one, I want to say, but I straight up got through three of those fucking books and that's, that's a lot. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to continue. The last one, <laughs> I don't know why it's on here. I think it's another one that I'm just like, I'm really curious. If you existed in the 90s as more than a baby, there's got to be a better way to phrase that, right? If you were reading books in the 90s, there we go, then you know all about the face on the milk carton. Caroline B. Cooney. I, I don't think I ever knew her name. I read this book because my sister, Leah, who does not read, got really into this. And then I think, okay, so there's the face on the milk carton, and then there was, uh, whatever happened to Janie? I read two or three of these, I want to say. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know. I keep confusing them because they also made, I want to say, Lifetime movies of these, and I definitely watched them. Uh, but this was about a girl who uh, one day sees her face on a milk garden and it was like, uh, was I kidnapped? It was great. <laughs> like, it was so dramatic and like weird and um, people, everyone was reading the face on the milk carton back in like 1997. So uh, I'm kind of curious to go back to it just, just, to, just to see. And what happened? Whatever happened to Jane? Those are a bunch of series. I'm not sure if I should continue. Please let me know if I should. In general, I just haven't really been very creative. I kind of stopped my D&D groups uh, because I just wasn't there mentally. Um, I have thought about streaming while I'm playing video games. I've been playing a lot of Skyrim and honestly, like, it's just kind of fun to like dig around in Skyrim and maybe chat. So uh, maybe I'll do that on this channel if that's something you'd ever be interested in, like hanging out one day, playing Skyrim together. Like that could be fun. I don't know. But I hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, I hope you're staying as safe as you possibly can. And I hope you're striving to create in your ways, whatever ways that is, because we all create in different ways. So join me next time, hopefully not a month from now.